So let's get started. So the first topic is obviously we need to introduce people about eBPF and Cilium. Can I see hands how many people know about eBPF? Awesome, quite a that's lot. A that's yeah. a crowd. <laughs> good. How many people know Cilium? I guess uh, quite a lot. Good, quite good. A lot. And how many of you people also use Grafana? Ah, oh, awesome. Okay, good. it's pretty much everybody. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. For those who don't know eBPF and Cilium, I do have, will introduce uh, the technology a bit and explain how we use eBPF for Cilium metrics, which we're all talking about today. Um, First of all, we work for the company called Isovalent. Um, Isovalent created Cilium and eBPF, open sourced it, and together with the community, we're de developing Cilium more and more, adding features. Today, we're also showing some latest features we're working on with Grafana, um, and Anna will show that in the demo later today. So first of all, eBPF. Um, we like to say what JavaScript is to your browser, eBPF is to the kernel. What that means is that we make the kernel programmable in a dynamic way uh, without changing the actual kernel. That allows us to basically run micro, micro, micro programs, sandbox programs based on kernel events. In the context of today, we're looking at kernel events where, for example, a pod sends a packet or a network device sends a packet on the Y, and we want to see metrics of that kind of events. So today's focus is to observe traffic using eBPF, and also we use eBPF for identity-based security and observability, of which we will talk a bit more later. Cilium is built on eBPF. You don't have to be an eBPF expert to actually run Cilium. Cilium enables the required eBPF programs on your cluster depending on the settings you set. So for today's, obviously, we're focusing on Hubble and Grafana. That means that you will enable Hubble, you possibly enable Hubble UI, and you most likely will enable Grafana metrics through Prometheus. This is the 30,000 feet view of what Cilium can do today. Obviously, Cilium started with core networking features, uh, network policies to secure uh, workloads, uh, transparent encryption using IPsec and WireGuard. We also support things like BTP for on-prem deployments, um, um, also load balancing out of the box. And on top of that, we built a observability platform called Hubble. And Hubble allows us to provide metrics and observability and also integration with Grafana, uh, scene platforms, we can export flows to Splunk, FluentD, et cetera. Last year released a service mesh solution. And this is also important in the context of today's session because we can provide golden signals without sidecars using Cilium Surface Mesh. And on the right side, we have the runtime security piece with Tetragon, and that's super powerful for observing file integrity, for example, or privilege escalation. And we can also export that data with Grafana and Hubble. So let's talk about some of the observability challenges. What we see a lot in the field is that customers struggle with troubleshooting for example, when a user reports slow responsiveness of their application. Maybe an application team gets reports of users saying the application doesn't respond or get errors, and then the application team most likely will blame the network. That happens a lot. Um, however, the network or the platform team may look at the platform and say, no, it's fine, behaves normally, I don't see any CPU contention, and the network, error, the network team may also not see any latency. The point here is that obviously networking is a layered solution. So networking might only look at layer three, layer four, layer two, and an application team is only interested in layer seven. Um, so it's hard to track where actually the real issue is. And that's what we call the finger pointing problem. And that's what we're trying to solve. On the other hand, at scale, it's really hard to identify where the problems are. Um, moderate clusters with tens or hundreds of nodes may possibly run thousands of servers with a lot of replicas. And in cloud, especially, if you want to follow all the logs and all the data of all those workloads based on their IPs, that will be super hard to track. And that's what we call, obviously, the noise, signal to noise problem. Um, especially if you're also dealing with multiple clouds or multiple on-prem data centers with Cilium, or sorry, with, uh, with plain IP logging it will be super hard to track where the actual issue is. Also, VPC logs don't have any context of the application. So where do existing mechanisms fall short? So 
Maybe you are looking at traditional monitoring devices where you centralize logging. These devices can become a bottleneck. Also, these devices don't have any context about the application. They just see IPs as source and destination with related ports, but no application awareness. Like I said before, VPC logs are nice, but at scale unusable, also no context of the ap application. If you troubleshoot a host, you can do really low level troubleshooting. You may do TCP dumps, et cetera, to see what's going on. But again, the host doesn't have cluster-wide context and doesn't have application context. So maybe you will modify your application code to instrument it, to add metrics to it, to understand the application better. But then you again have only the, the application context, but not the underlying network context. And that's also where part of the surface mesh came from, right? We want to abstract this code. We want to make it reusable for multiple applications. Service mesh is widely used for monitoring workflows to provide metrics. But service mesh um, may involve sidecars, has an operational challenge, um, and um, that's also harder to operate. Where Cilium without sidecars is more efficient using eBPF to provide those metrics and golden signals um, um, based on application uh, information. In the context of Cilium, it's important that uh, we, I explain the identity-based observability and security. This is used throughout our, our apply, uh, applying network policies on the network, applying security, but also observability. And how we do it is based on the labels, on the metadata you set for your workloads. We create for each unique set of data an identity. This is a cluster-wide property which we will use throughout the cluster to secure workloads and to observe work workloads. What that means is that, for example, in this example, when a front end sends traffic to the back end, we identify those as unique set of labels, therefore they are unique identities, and when that um, front end sends traffic to the back end, we uh, use eBPF to attach that identity to the data plane so we can secure the traffic, but we can also observe and monitor that traffic and get metrics. And to inspect and follow the traffic, we use Hubble um, for providing a, either a surface map, a Hubble UI, which provides a namespace view of all the connectivity within a namespace, but also connectivity egress and ingress to, uh, to and from the namespace. Uh, and we're able to also see and inspect protocols and all, even up to layer seven. Hubble CLI is also very useful for advanced troubleshooting or exporting flows to JSON or other solutions. And today we're obviously focused on uh, both the Hubble UI and the Hubble metrics, being able to export application layer seven context to Grafana through Prometheus. You may have known that, uh, or learned that Grafana has invested in isovalent. We have a good partnership with Grafana, and we're working together to provide better and better dashboards out of the box, which you can use easily. The goal is that we extend what we already do using eBPF to provide metrics, and Grafana helps us to create meaningful dashboards, and together we make sure that we get the best, uh, not only data operations, but also Golden Signals dashboards. Um, today we're focusing on Grafana and a, and a bit of Tempo, um, but also we're having more and more plans on Mimir and Loki in the future, so stay tuned for any updates there. I mentioned before multiple times Golden Signals, and I would like to highlight that you already can monitor a lot in terms of Layer 7 Golden Signals without sidecars, without added in instrumentation, by just enabling Hubble metrics. This allows us to see, for example, HTTP request rates. We can see HTTP durations between services. We can see return codes without instrumentation by just enabling layer seven metrics in Cilium and exporting those, for example, to Grafana. So this happens without any instrumentations, any sidecars, and also any additional components, actually, right? Because this is all served by Cilium, which is in the cluster already to provide networking, so you don't have to install anything. Yes. And besides that, we also support the pure layer free uh, metrics, right? So we can see TCP retransmissions, we can see missing SYN acts, we can see DNS responses and error codes, and also ICMP echo requests and replies. Yeah. 
we have same pattern for uh, different network layers from layer three to layer seven, different protocols, ICMP, TCP, DNS. Uh, we can, we, this, these protocols are completely different, but we can always detect uh, network issues using same pattern. For TCP, we look for uh, requests with SYN flag, missing responses with SNAC flag. For, for DNS, we also look for queries without responses, and so on and so forth. Good, thanks. So this allows us also, if you want to instrument your applications, and the, the golden signals I just mentioned before um, were not good enough, you can still use open telemetry or other means to instrument your application, and that allows us to, using the same metrics and eBPF, to export those metrics to Grafana and, 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 uh, and Toki and uh, sorry, um, Tempo. And then we will see exemplars. So this red arrow is showing, for example, an exemplar in this specific uh, dashboard. Okay, can you add something about yeah. that? So how it works is that if your application is instrumented with distributed tracing, uh, for distributed tracing, uh, you need to propagate trace headers. And if applications are doing that, propagate trace headers in, for example, HTTP requests, then Hubble parses these trace headers and includes them in metrics it produces as as exemplars. Thanks. And this has allowed, you can query those exemplars with Tempo. And then you have an example of an API request with transparent tracing uh, enabled. So you can see the span of this trace point and see where time has spent. And for example, also have specific error codes uh, for specific service. I also want to highlight that Cilium and Grafana have provided out of the box ready to use dashboards for you to use. Um, you can go to the Grafana marketplace and find those uh, uh, dashboards ready for you to use based on the version they are released. So one of the first I want to highlight is this is especially powerful for data operations if you want to monitor the health of your cluster. Um, we have a specific dashboard for Cilium agent metrics. This is obviously related to pure node cluster performance, uh, meaning that traffic uh, being um, um, transported from a node, so things like NIC performance, throughput, latency, uh, um, um, things like BPF map pressure on a host. Also operator metrics, these are cluster-wide metrics, so for example, the operator keeps track of identities, keeps track of BPF maps across the cluster, so you can monitor the health uh, for, for your cluster. Also things like IP address allocation, if we have enough space, we're using our IPAM. And obviously Hubble metrics, and that's the focus of today for the demo as well, to monitor all these application performance metrics. Also, I want to highlight, and I had a talk on Wednesday about network policies and how to employ, deploy network policies in enterprise environments. Uh, and a lot of these enterprises obviously not only want a zero trust um, um, environment, they want to secure it, but they also struggle to employ, deploy network pol policies in their enterprises, and they also want to have a confirmation or com for compliance reasons that they are matching specific flows. So we also developed a policy verdict metrics dashboards which provides you on the cluster or on the namespace level metrics and data if the network policies are matching all the flows in your network. So this can give you confirmation that you are securing all flows in your namespaces in your cluster. So enough talking, um, I'm going to hand over to Anna to show a live demo, how it is works, and also some of the new features. Okay, are we ready for the demo? Uh, I will switch to my terminal. Um, so, for the demo, um, we will use the OpenTelemetry demo application. It's a uh, Maybe many of you heard about uh, microservices demo from Google. Uh, there is a similar application provided by OpenTelemetry project, uh, which is very similar, many services uh, in different languages, but also instrumented with OpenTelemetry um, tracing in particular. This is what we will be interested. So let's take a look at how it looks like in the cluster. Mm. 
okay? Um, will it work? Or, yeah, it works on the conference Wi-Fi, great. So as we, as we can see, we, we have um, several pods uh, running in, in a namespace. Um, we also have an ingress here. So the cluster is running Cilium uh, with Cilium Service Mesh features. Uh, Cilium Service Mesh is, is a feature of Cilium. It's, it's not uh, really anything extra you, you install, but a um, set of features that comes with, uh, with Cilium that you can enable. Uh, one of them is uh, ingress, Cilium ingress. So we have um, Cilium ingress here. Um, and when we created ingress um, in Cilium, we also get the so-called Cilium, um, Cilium Envoy config, which provides routing, uh, defines routing that uh, happens uh, in, in our ingress. So let's take a look at this uh, Cilium Envoy config we have here. So as you may know, Cilium uses Envoy for layer seven capabilities. Yes. Um, so for also for surface mesh on the nodes without sidecars, the Cilium ingress controller programs Envoy configs. So you don't have to manage them. You just create a simple ingress resource. And this is an example. We use this ingress resource for accessing this demo application. So this is the uh, Cilium Envoy config that was generated. And we can say it's actually very simple. It uh, routes all traffic from slash, so all paths um, into the front end proxy that we can see here. All right, uh, let's get back to the browser and let's take a look at Grafana this time. So um, earlier this week, we released Hubble Grafana plugin. Uh, Grafana has this plugin system uh, it allows you to configure many different data sources uh, to plug in different panels and mix and match them in, in one dashboard so that you can aggregate all your observability data together. Uh, with the Hubble uh, data source plugin, uh, there are some dashboards that come with it. This is one of these dashboards, the HTTP connectivity dashboard. And here we can see what we just saw in the terminal, but visualized. Uh, we can see HTTP service map for our open telemetry demo application. Uh, I will zoom in a little bit. And here we can see, we can see two sources of data, uh, two sources of traffic. One of them is the load generator. So the traffic that's generated inside the cluster. And another one is ingress. So this is the traffic that we just generated uh, visiting the, the website um, through the Cilium Ingress. is visible here. Um, thanks to that, we can easily um, separate uh, different sources of traffic and see if any, any one of them is um, causing actual problems. In the service map, we can see um, statistics about um, requests per second and the latencies. Uh, some of them here are uh, suspiciously high for, for a reason. Um, and also in the dashboard, apart from the service map, we have um, a few graphs. These are standard Prometheus uh, time series with so-called, um, you can call it golden signals or uh, software engineers often call it, like to call it red metrics. So requests, errors, and duration metrics for HTTP traffic in this namespace. Uh, we can see that traffic here is, is pretty steady. Um, so yeah. um, the open telemetry demo application uh, has this feature flag service, which allows you to uh, enable features. Uh, some of these features are uh, actually generating errors. So we can see that here I enable feature to uh, generate a product catalog uh, errors on a specific product. And if we take a closer look at the service map, we can see that these are here are, are these red arches, so which indicate that some requests indeed are failing. 
if we look at, uh, at the bottom, at, here is the uh, errors graph, so uh, 500 requests plotted. If you look at this graph, we can see indeed there are errors. We can see also between which services. And we have exemplars here. So these uh, dots that you can see over the graph are, are exemplars. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Hubble, if application is traced with um, and propagates trace headers, then Hubble parses these trace headers and includes them as exemplars in flows it produces and in Prometheus metrics it produces. Uh, so if we click over here, we can query this individual trace in, uh, in Tempo. I have one opened here. Uh, this is trace visualized in Tempo. And in the trace, we can see uh, many more details. So we, we can see, first of all, latencies, so where the application uh, spends the most time. But also, we can see attributes, uh, additional metadata that were attached to this trace. And this is um, often very useful when we are uh, debugging errors. Uh, we can see here that indeed trace confirms that there are some errors. Uh, but also, we can see, for example, the full HTTP URL, which uh, includes the product ID. So the feature flag we enabled causes uh, all requests for this specific product to, to fail. So from the exemplars, we can see that all the exemplars, uh, all the traces for, for error requests are for the same product ID. So actually, there must be a problem with this specific product ID. Okay, let's get back to the OpenTelemetry demo application. So the, the application itself is a shop a shop with um, with telescopes and and um, other astronomical equipment. We have a card here, and let's try to place order, and it's not working. Uh, we could blame it on the conference Wi-Fi, but uh, <laughs> this is actually not the case here. Uh, it's not working, and we can't really see in the uh, HTTP metrics uh, or the service map why it's not working. But um, Hubble metrics uh, provide visibility on multiple network layers. This is where they are really powerful. Um, we have, uh, here we have a different dashboard that shows uh, network policy drops. So having network policies in uh, Kubernetes clusters is generally considered good practice. It's often required by security teams. It's often required by compliance. Uh, here in this application, you also have a network policies. And we can see that some of the traffic that is happening is actually denied by the network policy. Now, their uh, drops in the network can happen for many different reasons. This can be what engineers often like to call a network issue. Like, I can't see in my HTTP dashboard what is going on, so I will call it a network issue. I'm doing that myself. I can't, I can't say I'm not. Um, and it can be indeed, this can be many different um, issues with the underlying network. Then the network drops will tell us what what is uh, the reason which layer is, is problematic, and then the application team can show that, that graph to network team and ask them, well, fix the network. Here, though, we can see that the reason for the drops is policy denied, so no way to blame network layer for that. This is the, the problem with, with network policy. And we can see that there are uh, drops between checkout service and card service. So it does make sense indeed that we couldn't check out in the application. Uh, these are very simple Prometheus graphs, but what uh, you would normally like to do is probably create an alert on 
uh, such drops, because network policy drops m can mean two things. Uh, most, of, most commonly mean one of two things, either malicious traffic happening in the cluster or misconfiguration. Now, Hubble has also this Hubble UI. Uh, there is Hubble CLI and Hubble UI that can be used for more detailed investigation. By more detailed, I mean extremely detailed, because in Hubble UI we can see uh, also a service map, a bit different service map, but we can also see individual flows streaming. So these are like literally individual flows handled by, um, by Linux kernel. Um, again, from all uh, layers of, of the network. Some of them have layers of info, others don't. And uh, one feature of Hubble UI that I like is this. Uh, here we have this filter, so we can filter flows by verdict, a filter flows by dropped verdict. So here we can see what I can call, I call negative service map. It is a map of services that are trying to communicate, but can't. They can't communicate because the network are, are dropped. And again, we can see a very detailed view of many, many network flows between these two services that got dropped. Let's take a look at the terminal once again. And here, let's check the network policies that we have here. So we have a few network policies in the namespace. One of them is uh, to, prov to allow our traffic um, to get layer seven visibility. So HTTP service map, this, this, this dashboard policy. So earlier we need to enable layer seven visibility in Cilium, and this can be done through annotations, but uh, a very convenient way to do that is through network policy. So we have this uh, policy, network policy that is literally providing um, layer seven visibility uh, and not, not really denying any traffic, only allowing an HTTP traffic. And we have this uh, suspicious network policy that says deny. So Cilium network policies also can, can allow traffic or deny traffic. Here is an example of deny only network policy. And we can see that indeed uh, it is a misconfiguration, uh, a user error probably. Uh, there is a network policy that denies traffic uh, uh, between hard service and checkout service. All right. I think that would be it for the demo. Cool. So this shows that by just creating a simple layer seven visibility network policy, you will trigger all these layer seven metrics. We can see all layer seven protocols in Hubble in both the UI and the CLI. We out of the box then get this golden signals without instrumentation, without added, uh, uh, added tools. Um, and in this case, it was a deny policy, sure. That's, that's obviously for demo purposes, but in practice, you dem definitely see perhaps new applications, new versions of your applications. Uh, and then you have secured your application, but most likely with a new version, a new protocol is introduced or a new port. And both Hubble and Grafana allows you to effectively trouble such changes and effectively troubleshoot any issues between nodes, between services using those dashboards. Thank you, Anna, again for the demo. Great. Thank you. Cool. So what some call to actions for next steps. If you want to try this out yourself, we have some excellent demos uh, configured in a hands-on lab environment. We already have 21 labs you can try. And these are all about Cilium, Hubble, Grafana. Um, based on the feature, if you get started, do the getting started. But we also have some specific Hubble demos or Grafana demos you can try out. 
Um, if you would like to create it yourself, we have all the documentation on docs.cilium.io. If you have any questions or want to contribute or struggling with uh, perhaps a specific setup of metrics, feel free to join the Grafana and Hubble Slack channels. Um, yeah, we have uh, Cilium and MBPF Slack yes. where uh, we have Hubble and Grafana channels which are the best for asking questions about observability specifically and we, we are happy to help you Heather. Yes, so obviously mentioning the Cilium Slack uh, channel with the specific Hubble and Grafana channels for those specific questions. Um, so feel free to join. If you want to know more about how eBPF works, go to eBPF.io. Our colleague Liz Rice has written an excellent book explaining how we use eBPF for networking and security observability. You can download her ebook if you didn't get the chance to uh, see her at our signing sessions. Um, with that, I'm happy to also take questions. There are two mics at the site. Um, and also, we're happy to stay a bit longer if you want to uh, ask us questions directly. So thank you so much for joining this session.